Tonight, developers start work on Android 5.0 Lollipop. Ads are coming to Snapchat and the next chapter for Reddit. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 196 for Friday, October 17th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to 50-plus job boards with one click. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. Hey everyone, I'm Jason Howell, and it's time to get right into the tech feed. Let's start off here, right on schedule. Google released the full Android 5.0 Lollipop SDK today to developers. I actually have it on my phone right here. About two weeks of head start before the latest version of Android's mobile OS is made publicly available. The 5.0 SDK lets developers update their support libraries to implement material design. That's Google's new overall look for Android as well as the lean back user interface for TV apps. Android TV developers can expect more information on November 3rd about the distribution of apps through the Google Play developer console. The Nexus 6, Nexus 9, and Nexus Player will be the first set of devices to run Android 5.0 and will be available in early November. Around the same time, Google is set to roll out the Android 5 update worldwide to the Nexus 4, Nexus 5, Nexus 7, and Nexus 10 devices, as well as to Google Play Edition devices. And in other Android news, Hiroshi Lockheimer, that's Google's Vice President of Engineering for Android, is now also overseeing the engineering team behind Google's Chrome OS. Two people familiar with the matter tell the Wall Street Journal. This could be the next step of the company's mobile and desktop OSs emerging together, possibly. Google co-founder Sergey Brin has repeated since back in 2009, that Android and Chrome were likely to converge over time. Since 2013, both Chrome and Android groups have reported to Sundar Pichai, that's Google's senior vice president in charge of Android, Chrome, as well as apps. And back in June at Google I.O., the company announced an initiative for app developers to simplify the process of converting Android apps to run on Chrome. Not only would merging Google's two OSs simply work for developers, uh, who have currently have to create different versions of their apps for Google's two different platforms, but it could also simplify Google's marketing strategy. Android has already branched out beyond smartphones and tablets. Lollipop will also power in-dash car computers, wearable devices, and televisions. Ready for ads in your Snapchat feed? No? Well, too bad. Snapchat announced via blog post today that it's planning to do just that with the warning that it's going to feel a little weird at first, but we're taking the plunge, they say, their words. The ads won't appear in private messages between friends, but under recent updates. That's the section of the app where people's daily stories show up. Users can decide whether they want to click to view the ads, and at least in the beginning, the ads won't be targeted. Although Snapchat has a reported 100 million monthly active users and turned away a Facebook $3 billion for it, it still remains to be seen if ephemeral or temporary messaging is a good fit for ads. The company addressed potential user concerns in its blog post, promising, quote, we want to see if we can deliver an experience that's fun and informative the way ads used to be before they got creepy and targeted. On Wednesday, we told you about The Guardian's accusations that anonymous app Whisper's privacy policies misrepresent how the app actually works and that the company was tracking the location of its users, even if they opted out of that feature. Nietzsche Zimmerman, who's the editor-in-chief at Whisper, tells GigaOM that The Guardian articles deliberately mislead how location data is used by the service and were designed to promote fear. Regarding The Guardian's claim that Whisper can track the location of users who work at a specific company or are serving on military bases, Zimmerman says, quote, within the context of the editorial operation, we absolutely 100% do not in any way, shape, or form track or even care about the location of anyone who did not opt in to the location feature, end quote. What's tricky about this story is that Whisper had been working closely with The Guardian for about eight months as part of a partnership aimed at using the network to find interesting stories. So Zimmerman says the publication had full knowledge of the process, but exaggerated it for no reason. Zimmerman goes on to say that anonymity and privacy are different things. 
Although Whisper is an anonymous network, he said, it is also clearly public, so users know that their posts will be seen and can be searched. This could wind up as a case for the FTC, which is already looking into how popular apps like Whisper or Snapchat track users. Last week, reports pointed to Apple cutting off Bose and yanking Bose's headphones and speakers at its Apple Store locations. And poof, what do you know? They're gone. All Bose speakers and headphones have been completely removed from sale through the Apple online store, and several Apple retail stores' uh, locations have confirmed Bose inventory is no longer available there either. It was originally suspected that the ongoing patent dispute between Bose and Beats Electronics was the reason for Apple removing Bose products because Bose had filed a patent claim against Beats, citing improper use of its noise cancellation technology. However, the two companies settled that dispute out of court, but there's more strife. The NFL is sponsored in part by Bose, which means Beats headphones aren't allowed on camera during NFL-related events. This has led to several NFL players being disciplined for wearing Beats headphones. Apple does still sell other competing headphone brands like Bowers & Wilkins, Urban Ears, RHA, Sennheiser, and others, which does suggest the Bose ban is personal. Now, coming up on TN2, why one town in Massachusetts wants to ban Comcast from serving its residents. And next up, I'll talk with Tom Sheridan of VentureBeat about Reddit's acquisition of Alien Blue. But first, are you hiring? Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? Posting your job in one place isn't enough to find quality candidates. With ZipRecruiter.com, you post your job to 50-plus job sites, including Craigslist, LinkedIn, and Twitter, all with a single click. You find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. You just post once and watch your qualified candidates roll in to ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Quickly screen candidates, rate them, and hire the right person fast. And for those of you looking for a job, ZipRecruiter helps you find a new employer as much as it helps a new employer find you. You can have the newest job posting sent to your in inbox every day. It's great for employers as potential candidates will learn about your new postings quickly and you'll get the most motivated candidates this way. So find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses. Right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. And we thank ZipRecruiter for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining me right now is Tom Sheridan, staff writer at VentureBeat. How's it going, Tom? Uh, it's going pretty good. Awesome. It's good to have you here today. Happy Friday. Uh, let's chat about what I think is one of your favorite subjects these days, Reddit. At least you write yes. a lot about Reddit. <laughs> um, uh, it, and it feels like I've probably um, had uh, most of the time it's been useless. And now that they got they got funded... I have so much to talk about. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, it's been my guilty pleasure um, for the last last while as well. And like you said uh, earlier this week, you know, it was it got a large round of funding. And you also reported that Reddit acquired the iOS app Alien Blue. So, starting with that, for those who don't know, what is Alien Blue and why is this acquisition a big deal? Well, uh, Alien Blue is an iOS app um, from Jace Morrissey. He's a really talented developer and he created this app uh, a long time ago and it slowly became the preferred app of most like active users. If you used Reddit often, you probably knew about it and preferred it. Um, it's so much so that Reddit, um, like the, the actual Reddit team, when it was still just a handful of people, they just stopped development of their official app and just used alien blue. <laughs> um, so it was like, uh, Unofficially, the official Reddit iOS app anyway. So they just took that first part off. So it's now official. Right. Yeah. And I mean, up until recently, of course, a, a month ago, Reddit didn't even have an app of their own. Then they released their AMA app. That was kind of the start of uh, Reddit getting into the mobile world and kind of owning their destiny in the mobile world. Do you mm -hmm. expect that we're going to see a similar purchase or development on the Android platform? Where do you think the company is going to go there? Uh, uh, admittedly, like I'm not really as familiar with the most popular um, Android clients for Reddit. Um, I, I would I would think that they probably wouldn't because there's not a clear a clear leader, and that means they can kind of uh, write their own ticket. But you know, I'm hoping that Alien Blue will just make it to Android. 
Yeah, it sounds like, that's yeah. That's why I haven't switched to Android. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm an Android user, of course, and uh, there are a ton of Reddit apps, and there are a lot of really good ones. But I but from what it sounds like, what you're talking about on iOS, I, I couldn't say that there's a clear winner on Android. There's a lot of really great ones, but there isn't one that the majority of users use. So. Yeah, maybe they'll just end up developing or reporting that over. I would love to see that. Now, with the recent $50 million round of funding uh, that you mentioned a few minutes ago, no doubt helped with the purchase of Alien Blue here. What else do you think we could expect to see out of the company with that funding? You know, I'm really not sure if they'll make any more acquisitions. This one, uh, it seemed like before they'd even sat down to go after funding, they made a list and that was probably near the top of them of mm -hmm. what are we going to do? Um, so it's like housekeeping type stuff. I would say that, uh, they're, they're probably going to use the money to revamp some, some other existing products or, uh, services that, that they just never had the resources to deal with. So like the, the first one that comes to my mind would be the Reddit gold subscriptions, which, mm -hmm. It's cool. Like if you if you like Reddit enough, um, you can pay for it. You can get some features before anyone else. Um, but they they also tried to to sort of make it like a Costco card for the internet. Um, even though Costco does internet deals, uh, and it, it it seemed like a pretty cool thing that kind of didn't go very very far. But I would expect that to maybe get revamped and cleaned up. Um, and then the other thing that, that I, I find that no one knows about is reddit.tv. Um, it just kind of aggregates all the, the videos that are submitted to their most popular uh, subreddit categories. And it just plays them like their regular TV. So <laughs> a stream of ridiculous uh, video content in, in many ways. Often, Be often so. Because yeah. so much content on Reddit is really ridiculous in an awesome way. But, uh, and finally, there have been fears uh, that this, you know, $50 million round of funding would negatively affect the open freewheeling culture of the site, particularly in light of the departure of Eric Martin, who's the general manager of Reddit of six years, an architect, arguably, of some of Reddit's most mm -hmm. notable community building efforts. What are your thoughts here? Do you think this is going to change things or do you think it's going to be business as usual? Um, I think, well, we've already seen things are definitely changing. Uh, a lot of unreddit type decisions were made because Reddit's a business um, and and people are very emotional about those changes. Uh, but but I think I think it's gonna change, and that's the the real question is whether they can keep the magic mm -hmm. and they can keep the the community pulled together. but but overall, I think this is this is a good thing. It's exciting. I think uh, Eric, he, he hasn't said anything beyond um, his initial tweet saying that he was leaving um, and, and a bunch of animated GIFs. He hasn't said anything officially. I would think that he probably was the gatekeeper. He wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, he and the rest of Reddit realized the value and the potential. And it just took a while for the business to catch up. And now that they've got 50 million, I, I could, I would say Reddit's not going anywhere. They're going to be around a while. Um, and I expect to write about them weekly now. Um, yeah. So. Continuing to be more and more relevant as long as they really pay attention to that community, which is really what Reddit is based on is that mm -hmm. sense of community. Then I don't and, think, yeah. I mean, they still, they still have, I mean, Eric, Eric's a big part of the site. Um, but they still have a, a large portion of their workforce that were just really active Redditors, uh, developers that just had side projects um, and they hired on kind of like Jace. Mm -hmm. um, so so it's still like being run by Reddit, even if it doesn't, if it feels like it's kind of a, a corporate shell of itself. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think that that it's going to change overnight. Yeah, I'd agree. Tom Gerritter is a staff writer at Venture Beat. Really appreciate you coming on the show today, Tom. Um, tell people where they can follow your work online. Uh, you can you can find me at uh, Venture Beat, obviously. Or if you're lazy, you can just type in techgeekjournalist.com tech because I'm my ego is so huge, I had to buy that domain to point it to my <laughs> Venture Beat profile. Um, yeah, thanks Excellent. for having me on. Right on. Really appreciate it, Tom. We'll talk to you soon. All right, and finally, Worcester, Massachusetts hates Comcast. The Worcester Telegram reports that members of its city council have informed Comcast that it isn't wanted 
in the city because of the mountain of bad press surrounding how the company treats its customers. The council voted 8-3 to three this week in favor of a resolution asking the city's mayor to not allow the transfer of the city's cable television license from incumbent provider charter to Comcast. One councilor who voted for the resolution said he did so because of Comcast's, quote, deplorable and substandard customer service, saying it's a terrible company. That's according to the Telegram. In my opinion, it goes on, they should not be welcome in this city. Comcast is a wolf in wolf's clothing. It's that bad. They are awful, no doubt about it. Maybe we can't stop it, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't speak out, end quote. Now, before you start cheering, the, the council doesn't actually have final say over whether the license is transferred or not. So this is mostly an advisory note, but also a vote that sends a message to the Federal Communications Commission that it may not want to allow Comcast's proposed merger with Time Warner Cable. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program as Tech News Today every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.